Okay, this is in Naples, Florida. This blue dot is where I am on this map. This is uh, Davis right here. And this is Tam Tamiami Trail, or also US 41 here. As I zoom out, you'll see that there's an airport right here. There's also just basically there's one road you can go across at this point. And as far as any other roads I can go across, I mean, I guess maybe that little one there. What else do you have to like build across? This one. This is like a very important traffic point right here. This is also, we're also near that traffic point. Uh, as you can see, even further south here. There's basically two lo there are basically two lobes to Naples here, this west part and the east part. Because once you get south of here, there are no other roads. There are no roads that go in between. Do you see that? None. So this is a very important traffic point right here. I'm located right here over by the IHOP. Um, Looking at a map here, I also plotted some street lights in this area. So right now I'm located like right about here on the map where the cursor is. South of here there are a bunch of lights out like in the middle, like in the middle of that road that goes that direction. Not this one right here, but further over that eventually intersects at that stoplight down there that we can't quite see from here. Um, those lights in the middle are out. Like an example of one of those lights is right there. A lot of those lights are out. Um, the few that are on, there's a high, like a much more highly represented demographic there of um, mercury vapor rich lights when they are on, which I think is also interesting because I feel like those might be a signal uh, for drones or something from the air. Um, also, if we look, I think basically straight across here, there's, um, so also there are lights that are on the side of the road. In fact, we can see that one looks kind of pink visually to me. Um, maybe I'm not actually looking at the right lights, but there are, so there are these cranes and then I think behind that semi somewhere, there are, um, mercury vapor rich lights that are on the side of the road that are on the other side from these cranes of that road over there that's very dark so i just remember that if you look at my other video you can see it i already did a video um i think it, i don't remember exactly what the title is um but actually i'm going to tell you what it is let's see In a moment here. Uh, I'm gonna pop. Okay, so going down this list here. Why are there so many canes, uh, cases of cranes near bridges? That's something else you want to check out too. Not just the example I gave, but like up by uh, Sarasota um, and even um, Punta Gorda by those bridges. But they still have the cranes where they had them before. Those little nauseums keep biting me. Let's see. Uh, oh, right here. Why the darkness and mercury vapor like lights? Um, 12 minutes and 11 seconds long. Oh my gosh, these, these gnats are driving me nuts. Okay. I hate that. And then I itch. They just, like, their little bites itch. I have like hundreds of them on me crazy okay so I'm, I'd show this though just to show you how important this area is the red kind of delimits a boundary where there's water and you can't go around it here um, and then these dark circles show where the lights are out and then we have the airport right there so consider that the airport is right there this would be an important point to get up to the airport, and this is just really important traffic-wise, guys. Um, these lights with the red circle around them and the green in the middle, these are mercury vapor-rich lights, and when there's yellow in the middle, 
Um, I think that's also a special kind of light. I noticed when it's that color of yellow and then also purple, but I don't have any examples of purple here. Some of these lights that you see, like this one right here, but not this is not an example of one. These also vary as well, also in their color. And I know of a couple examples where they're mercury vapor rich lights. And I think those are strategically placed too. These rectangles that are yellow, um, those are just um, snapshots that I made. I'm not going to go through the snapshots right now. So I'm going to pause this. Sounds like, I guess, the cops and a fire truck are here, so I'm going to... Okay, so that is an example of an aircraft taking off from the airport, which is very close to where we are, as I showed you. We do not have, oh, now we do. Oh, that, look at that. Now we have blinking lights on here. I did not see these blinking lights before, and I wanted to show you that there were not any lights on top of here. I guess, I don't know if these were on before. It'd be really interesting. You should check that video that I showed you that you can check and see for yourself. Do you see those lights? Maybe it's just the perspective and we can only see that at certain angles though. I was over there. And also in my other video that I did right before that one, that's also in that list, uh, I was looking straight up and also from the angle over there at these cranes and I never saw that blinking light. So I don't know. But there are blinking lights on these at least now. Notice that it does blink rather rapidly. Um, I still feel like these are in close proximity to a very important route to get out of here. These lights, I don't know if they would have like a more of a blinding effect when there are no, when there are hardly any lights over there and it's rather dark on the adjacent road, um, such that there's not as much of a glare for light or how that would work. But just, just take note of the fact that over there, um, the lights in the middle, like I said, like that light there, almost all of them are off except for over by the bridge, which is the bottleneck, like the freaking bottleneck for traffic between the east and west lobes of Naples there. On that one, there are, there's two mercury vapor rich lights on that bridge. They just happen to be right on the bridge, guys. I don't think that's an accident. Um, by the way, this looks like a mercury vapor rich light here. Visually though, it does have a lot of blue, but yep, as I zoom in, it looks greener. Also right next to it is a different, I think a different kind of light actually, that is even more mercury vapor rich compared to how bright it is. Now these do do that when they start up, but I don't think that these are just starting up guys. We can come back and see if it turns orange or something. Then also right there, an example of more mercury vapor rich lights. This says Freedom, boat club the cranes are right there elevated position with the view of traffic trying to evacuate or going in either direction I'm not sure which direction I know that sounds really stupid but I, I don't know if it's for people trying to go to the airport or for people trying to get on the water and leave or for people trying to take and I'm not sure why they would need to but it maybe it's a contingency for going down um, US 41 to the southeast to leave the whole Naples area like this whole metro area and just keep going towards Miami or whatever that goes to I'm not sure but I do I do not think that this is a random kind of event I've noticed that these things tend to be kind of by bridges when I say that I'm not using math but I've seen a lot of bridges or a few bridges that have these next to them and I still don't, I don't think that's accidental guys I don't you you start paying attention though to your own city and where you are. If you live here in the Florida area, start paying attention to this because I noticed down here, I mean, this is a very, this is a very temperate climate, right? In the winter time. And there isn't a bunch of snow on the ground that you have to try to like, where you can't just drive through the grass because you get stuck in the snow. It isn't that way here in Florida, guys. And it's survivable too, right? Once you leave, if you don't get killed by gnats here, like the nosiums. And, and alligators, but guys, this stuff's creepy. Like when I came down to Florida, it's even more creepy than it was like in Minnesota. And in Minnesota, I still noticed that these kinds of lights, the mercury vapor rich lights or mercury vapor lights, mostly mercury vapor lights, depending on the size of the city, 
Sometimes they use the metal halide lights that are mercury vapor rich in parking lots or the green LED street lights or the purple street lights that are in parking lots like they do here in Florida or the really yellow lights. Like I, I still noticed the same thing before I came here. When I came here, I saw plenty more examples. I still have, I still can do a second video about the parking lots and the purple lights because I've found so many more here. The trend just continues where there are parking lots near important traffic routes and they have the purple street lights in them. Now that's usually there are at least two of them like in the parking lot. Sometimes I've seen it up to like, well, I've seen it actually up to like probably over 20 of them in a parking lot. Um, and some of them, like in Arkansas, in Conway, Arkansas, they were like all really blue, like really blue purple. So, and that was at a range of hectometers away from where you get onto the interstate. I've also seen examples where like it's a really blue one, for example, like in, here close to Naples over by Collier and Interstate 75, where it's a really blue light. In fact, with really large LEDs instead of the normal LEDs, which still somehow I guess also have a defect or something, or they're just purposely blue, and they just picked one of the all their LED lights in the parking lot, even though nobody can see them through the trees from Collier, they still just wanted to have their advertised somehow to people who can't see it anyway, unless they're flying over, to have a light, nice little blue patch right where you enter uh, the Holiday Inn. Yeah, it's obviously just to be seen from the air. And it just happens to be near where Interstate 75 has already curved and gone eastward. And just in the North Naples area. I don't think that's accidental at all. Because there's just one more route that you could take eastward. And that would be US 41 or Tamiami Trail. Okay. Not a coincidence. My point is the, those purple lights, they can act at a larger distance. And in some places like Pittsburgh, Kansas, they seem like they're set up for the decameter level. Like tens of meters like on a road like towards the end of a road or the end of a block I feel like um, there would be some kind of algorithm for drones to know which would which one is which by looking at the pattern from some altitude or something like that or to be read by satellites or whatever I'm not sure what's going on guys but pay attention to this stuff it's even lights that are temporarily they're most of the time they're not even on like the orange lights that cycle is that for like a drone there, like flying over? Or is that for something, somebody maybe in another country reading it and trying to figure out where to strike us so that they can see it? Like what's going on guys? The pandemic was supposed to be worldwide, right? All the other countries acknowledged it. Yeah, we had a pandemic. What was that actual pandemic that we had? Was that a vaccine or did they just keep making something and releasing it? Because Start thinking, start really thinking critically about what's going on with the mutations in that virus. When you compare SARS-CoV-1, SARS, -CoV -1, SARS uh, the Wuhan strain in NSP-13 at, on the amino acid level and compare it with the mutations that you can see in PubMed number 33589648. And look at those mutations and tell me that it either wasn't a vaccine that they, they generated in a lab and it had to mutate in order for it to have a selective advantage to even replicate, or that they just may want to make up a pandemic for us. Those purple street lights started in 2019 is what I heard. I heard some people in Topeka, they had them back in 2019. Do I think that this, ha this is, do I think it might've been planned? Well, yeah, I do. I guess I gotta wonder though, like how bad was the Wuhan strain? Was it really bad and was that a vaccine? Or was this all some setup to set things up to have more control and depopulate or something later? It's something people should really care about. You should really care about this. If, you, if you're paying attention to what I'm paying attention to here, you should start to really care about the street lights and other features here. So there is heterogeneity in these lights. Like that's not a mercury vapor rich light, right? Well, if we keep walking this way, there's one I don't think that we can really count this one though. It's starting up or it's stuck in that phase. That's a really dim one, so I don't, I'm not going to count that one for consideration. But there is heterogeneity in these lights for how mercury vapor rich they are compared to how bright they are. And who knows what else is going on when it's in that phase? I, mean, I would like to know what else is being radiated that we don't see if they look different like that. 
I think it's a signal. I think it's a signal for the air. I think that what that illuminates on the ground, on camera you can see that it looks greener or as it is. That's one way to know what these are. In this case, well this camera isn't very sensitive to that, um, but like in parking lots, if you check my other videos, you'll see that lights that are kind of greener, like not quite as green as this one, if they're metal halide, they're usually not that green, unless they're visually green. Um, they illuminate the ground greener, but visually though, they look about the same as the, the, like the glare on the ground from the other lights, like the same color, but on camera they look greener. That's a mercury vapor light there, and that looks a lot greener on camera than it does visually. Visually, I can tell it's slightly green. Here, it's very green. And this is one of the distinguishing features, at least, for mercury vapor phase or mercury vapor rich lights or mercury vapor lights, which are using mercury vapor, which is being excited by a filament, by ultraviolet light generated in there that hits that mercury vapor and it produces that produces some spectra. One of them is green. There's also some red emitted from it. I'm trying to remember the other colors. You can look it up on Wikipedia. Look up like what the actual spectra are that are emitted from mercury vapor lights and it can show you a spectrogram of it. For all we know it's some color red that we don't see or something like that that's emitted by it too. That's not in the visible spectrum. That would be in the radio spectrum or something like that that could still attract drones because the purple street lights also if you look at twisted luck truth um, look up purple street lights when he uses the RF meter and looks at the radio frequencies um, I don't know if there was like a negative control for that but he did show though that at an increase that there were uh, there was more radio frequency emitted from those lights the LED purple street lights the defective ones um, that there was a like a high radio frequency uh, intensity of, of the high magnitude of that RF frequency. Um, maybe it's something like that. It may not even have to do with the ultraviolet light. I also think that the yellow street lights would be an interesting thing to look at as well. Um, but whatever it is that's being um, cast by those lights somehow I think is going to attract drones. So this light right here looks the same as this one, like, as far as the actual shape, I think. Oh, wait. Hold on, this might actually be an LED light above us. But that is clearly more mercury vapor than these other lights. In this case, though... Those look like LED lights in there. Like the large LED lights. That also, I think, has some mercury vapor in it, but not as much as this guy right here. As we zoom in on this, you can see that all that green in it. Whereas if we zoom in on this one, and this isn't even just angle, I don't, I'm not gonna cross the road to prove it, but I, trust me, it's not just the angle that we're looking at it at. I've seen this, I've seen enough examples of these lights to know it's not even the angle. It's that some of these are actually producing more of that green kind of spectrum. This is even slightly visually green here. That one's probably also a little bit green on camera there, but it's not quite as green as this one here. My point is, there's even heterogeneity among these lights, and these aren't even the same as like the lights over there on that other, on uh, US 41. Um, or even in the parking lots, like a lot of times where they're mercury vapor rich, where there is heterogeneity too. If you really study these kinds of lights, when you see something that's green on camera like this, start to notice where they tend to be. Sometimes they're even arranged on purpose to be close to the road, or even alternating back and forth like in a building. They do stuff on purpose. They have a way of knowing what these lights look like before they put them up. Just like the purple street lights, they're not randomly placed. They're used to mark areas. I know this because I've been looking at these lights for a while. This by the way is Davis, I think Davis Street or Davis Boulevard, I think it's Davis Boulevard, but you can look at it on a map, it intersects 41 here in Naples. Um, 
I wanted to actually originally show you since that I don't think that light was blinking before maybe I'm wrong you can check my video because we would have had this angle and you should be able to see it but maybe actually I don't see it blinking on this oh that's hard to see I don't know check it though on the I don't it's on another camera I don't know if you can see the red light blinking but I'd be really interested now in going back and checking but I didn't notice a red blinking light from that there or from this perspective when I was going westward but I did notice that this has a light on it and this is a comparable height to those and I wondered to myself why why wouldn't they have lights on top of those is it so that um, you're not as likely to be able to see somebody on top of those with the perfect view of this road and the other one evacuating going in either direction also near the airport or what but in this case I guess or at least right now I see that there is a rapidly blinking light that's not on a lot of the time but it's still blinking rapidly I don't know if it's really that severe though compared to the some of the towers where they blink really rapidly and there's a little bit longer wait time between blinks yeah that's not a very bright light guys I don't know I don't know if you can see it right now but yeah I wanted to show you that uh, I think that's all I'm gonna do uh, by the way so there is another mercury vapor rich light that's like the third street light from um shadow lane was it shadow lane parkway or shadow something um also there is a mercury vapor rich one right see how these are different that's greener than that one yeah they're different they threw some of those in there guys I also don't think it's coincidental that there happen to be ones on the parking lots too that are mercury vapor lights. That's not an accident in my opinion. They're not that common. They're not very frequent. And also one right there on this important road. Alright, that's all I'm going to do for this video.